Next guest is calling on black Americans to stop voting Democrat in a new op-ed saying, is black America caught in a voting generational curse? They voted in large numbers for Biden, who authored the 1994 crime bill that harmed black Americans. Joining us to discuss is senior RNC media surrogate and advisor to President, former President Trump, Bruce Lavelle. Bruce, always a pleasure seeing you, sir. Um, yeah. This is changing a little bit because even though it's still a monster number, 87 percent, I think, voting Democrat this past time, that, that number is coming down. But tell me your rationale for why you think people should think twice if they happen to be African-American about voting for the Democrat. Yeah. And thanks, Heather and uh, Bob, for having me. You know, listen, um, like it says, generational curse. And I hate to be so bold and profound that way, but it is. Um, my mother voted this way. My daddy voted this way. But the interesting thing about it, when, when you, we said 87 percent in the article, remember that 13 plus percent was for President Trump, which is the largest increase since 1960. However, Bob and Heather, it would have been tremendous. Like I said on your show many times, I predicted it'd be in the 20s. And, and the reason why had, had all the media outlets, okay, <laughs> all the media outlets been fair and let guests like me, uh, Pastor Scott, a lot of us out here who've been uh, an advocate for, uh, you know, a large cultural uh, diversity coalition that goes out and talks about the policies and the positive policies that Trump, President Trump has and the Republican Party has, and say, hey, give us a shot. However, as it says in that article, we were, we were be being busy suppressed. We weren't invited on. I haven't been on the last two years, and I was five days a week on some of those networks. Yes, they're hostile, but I noticed as we started trending towards 19, the messaging started to resonate with some of their viewers. And I know that because I look at my, I call my fan mail, yeah. outside of being called all types of names, <laughs> and I won't say it on your show, but I call it fan mail. But I noticed it, they would make an insult, but they say, well, you know, I, that president, he's whatever, but I like that opportunity zone. So I knew yeah. we were starting to peer through, and then we got shut down. So essentially, uh, you know, had it been free, like Newsmax reporting all all news fairly, um, some of that, then I know for a fact it would have been larger. So, so discuss, Bruce, just a little bit more on that, on that point in terms of the former president and some of his policies supporting black Americans compared to President Biden. <clears throat> one of the, the issues that you talked about is the platinum plan and how it stood on the four pillars of opportunity, security, prosperity, and fairness. And, um, but to get the message out to folks, like you were saying, uh, you were roadblocks were put up. Yeah. Well, and they still are. Um, they're still doing it. You see what the cancel culture is doing. You know, it's interesting. I was just talking to one of my business colleagues. He he migrated. He he escaped Russia. He's a Russian Jewish gentleman in the in the Rolex diamond business. And he was. And everyone, you know, it's interesting. I talk to that understands what escaping a country from that promoted socialism and communism, they're the most patriotic people we have in the States. It's interesting. And he, he, he warned me, he says, you know, I see where it's starting, not so much in black America, it's trying to control a, a particular voting block in one corner, but also just the terms of uh, pushing back anything that has to do with free market, free capitalism, et cetera. Now on the platinum plan, that's a half a trillion dollars worth of resources, guys. And the president came here in Atlanta, I know he's watching. <laughs> Kudos to you, uh, President Trump. A half a trillion dollars worth of resources and infrastructure in the South. A half a trillion. Granted, President Trump's been out there in the in the media 45 years. Not one soul come forward to accuse him of being racist until he puts his name on the ballot. However, President Biden has many, many, many years, and to mention in that article about the crime bill, which is which he authored and wrote in '94 the largest mass incarceration of black America. Yeah. So I was so perplexed, like, my God, are you kidding me? So this has to be a generational curse that has to be broken. Yeah. Let me ask you about, I don't want to be a sociologist here, but how much of this is about class? Because you're somebody that worked hard, thought about what you were doing, put together a business, you were successful, and suddenly you stop thinking about what can the government give me and start thinking about uh, can I get my taxes cut because it's a yep. change of psychology. So do you think the, the vote from the black community changes as they advance economically? Well, you know, great question, Bob. You know, interesting enough, you know, it's not, it's not 
unfamiliar territories for black Americans like myself, historically, all the way from Black Wall Street, which was in Tulsa. And you saw the travesty yeah. and the riots and the murders. Um, Auburn Avenue here in Georgia, Harlem, and Parsons in Chicago, Rosebud. There's many, many, uh, re as I say, retail commodity black business owners that did flourish. It's nothing new except, however, President John, President Donald John Trump, he said, hey, in Trump Tower one time, he says, you know, the disconnect is pushing forward the retail commodities, the business back, the business to push back, as we call it, the quote, generational wealth. You know, Bob and Heather, one thing that really, really just blew my mind, I was pushing back on a lot of the networks back then. Yeah. They're saying, well, he got a million dollars from his daddy. I'm like, my dad gave me 10,000. What does that make me? And that's the whole point here is restoring and talking about as part of those pillars of the platinum plan to put like, listen, we're not saying you need to come over here to Republican Party. Just if you want to be a Democrat, you call yourself whatever you want. But look at these policies right here. Yeah. Vote on these. Yeah. This is what President Trump was saying. And we had to fight all the other cancel cultures, all the mainstream media's to suppress this tremendous idea. But as Eric Bowling said earlier in your segment, 2022 will yeah. be a game changer. Yeah. Well, Bruce, you only got 10,000. I'm pretty impressed because you did a lot with that 10,000. And we appreciate you joining <laughs> us to uh, uh, yeah. share your thoughts on this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Bob and Heather. Appreciate it. Thank you.